Hey, that's this is fun. Call him Birdman. Hey, Birdman. What does that mean? I mean, he's Birdman. What he's a bird. Hey, do we get a prize or no? If I can be of any help, just tell me. I will, baby. You want me to bring some fries over? Your ass to work. <laughs> Char cheese with fries. Char cheese plain. Say fries. what, motherfucker? Burger or hot dog? What the fuck, motherfucker? I'm burger and hot dog. <laughs> what she do? Char cheese plain. Ask him, motherfucker. Fries. Ask him what he's doing here. Can I get a char cheese plain with the fries? What are you doing here? Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot okay, that's the fine. All right, you got it. That's it. That's it. Hey, kitchen! Yeah. Yeah. Don't smile, let me see your teeth. Save your money. Let me see your teeth. That's my problem. Unlike you, you need a little counseling, baby. You got a lot of issues you're dealing with. You don't like black people. Do you know what's wrong with it's these okay. animal programs? It's okay, people like baby. You are so no, poor, people like you. No, no, it's people like you. you. No, it's people like you, you motherfucker. You in me, motherfucker. It's you in me, motherfucker. You fucking crackhead. Shut up. That's what you mad about. You sick? You just died. She's a white nigger. What the fuck? Shut the fuck up, you piece of white trash. You unhappy? You unhappy because you are stunned by her? Yes. Shut the fuck up. 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 Shut the Don't fucking call us niggers. No. Hey, man, no. Call, call what? What? Fight, dude. Relax, buddy. No, you don't do it. Speak English. What the fuck are you calling us niggers for? Are you guys serious? No, he called us niggers. Okay, he called us the N word. I don't want to be fucking called the N word. You didn't mean to. You didn't mean to. Just get the fuck out of here. If you don't like being around black people, just get the fuck hey, out of here. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. I got everything cut out, man. man. What the fuck was up with that guy? Why did he call us that? Right. Now that I'm fully integrated, it's time for me to find a black woman. This is how it's going to work. Each couple, you have five minutes to ask anything you want, get to know the person, and hopefully go on another date. Okay. Oh, do we start? No, she didn't say start. Yes. Oh, you did? Oh. Okay, okay, okay. So, do you want to end up with a black guy? What do you mean, do I want to end up with like, a black Like, why, why, why are you at a black speed dating thing? You know, Because not... I'm a black woman. Yeah. Yeah. So... so... <laughs> But I don't know, maybe last week you went to a Caucasian speed dating or something, or well, interracial no, one. No, no, no. Well, no, I haven't. Okay, so... I mean, but I have done um, interracial dating. Oh, you have? And yeah. what, did that end up well? No. Nah. I read this book and it said that with interracial couples, sometimes, sometimes you just cannot understand what it's like to be... For, like, if you're white, you can never understand what it's like to be black. You reckon a white person can never understand what it's like to be black? Okay, well, first of all, first of all, you want to say that he doesn't understand me because I'm black. If he doesn't understand me, he doesn't understand me as a person. It has absolutely nothing to do with my color. I'm unique in my color or not. I'm still unique. But do you feel like you have a bond with... Oh, my God. Well, hurry up, hurry okay, up. Okay, okay. Listen, I know this guy in Melbourne, this friend of mine, and he's Jewish, right? And he just... He says to me that if he meets another Jew, he just feels this bond, even if he doesn't even know them that well, because they've just got this well, shared true. experience. Okay, but that's true. They've got, they've gone to, even though they don't know each other, they've gone through all this stuff together. And so this Jewish guy's thinking, like, if, if he marries someone not Jewish, then... Maybe he just won't have this bond in the. Then he don't need to be thinking about dating nobody that's not you. If he's gonna be going through all of that, that tells me he's not open. But what about what about you? Are you worried if you dated someone that wasn't black that they they wouldn't quite ever well, be able to I, understand? Well, he, let me tell you something. I'm a sister. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you come back around. Okay. <laughs>
I read this book that the smells that you experience, like as as a child, like a chicken soup boiling in the kitchen if you're Jewish or whatever the food African Americans, that sort of like stays with you, and it, so you're kind of like locked into these experiences. Maybe if it was 1950 and everyone was still so segregated and all the black people lived here and had these experiences and all the white, but now because we're all merged together and we're all experiencing different things and different cultures. Yet all your former boyfriends were black. Only because that's the, that's the situation I find myself in, not because I'm against anyone else. I don't care, personally. If I saw a black man with a white woman, hey, maybe they like each other. He didn't want me. He wanted her. Whatever. This is, you see, this is depressing to hear this because basically what it's saying is that I'm stuck in the past having any angst or issues. <laughs> whilst if, yeah, whilst the, key, the generation younger than me have all sorted it out. So I'm like this old, pathetic, antiquated fogey who's sort of like... Get over it. Yeah. It's what, it's what, it's what, what it's saying to you is get over it, basically. So, so what's your religion? I'm a Christian. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so could you go out with a black Jew? Um, Would the blackness overrule the Judas? I could, could date one, yeah. um, but I, it would definitely take more, um, more conversation in terms yeah. of marriage. Don't you worry if you go out with a white guy, you're going to get to age forty or fifty, and just you. I don't know, all these, these, well, these, these, these so, are quiet He should be things. understanding. He should be understanding. If we're sitting there watching Roots and I get upset and I cry, he should be understanding. But don't you get, like, another black person is really going to understand why you're crying at Roots in the, no, way, no, in the way that a no, white person no, won't? No, not necessarily. Because he might not, he might have probably been there, oh, done that. I, I understand he can't. No, no, not necessarily. Stop. Don't try to make color an issue when it doesn't have to be. For some people it might be, but for others it's not. So don't try to make it an issue. A white, per- a white person can understand why. But why why, why you're crying at roots? Just ask questions. Not every black man understands every black woman. In the black community, is there like pressure to kind of date within your own race? Like, you know? To a degree, yeah. I mean, my mother has told me up front she would like me to marry a black man. So. <gasps> Even the other day, someone told me, you know, that you should try and stay with, as I said, date a brother because, you know, they need strong black women. Oh, yeah. Kind of, I guess, propels the culture and the race to better themselves. So if you're losing out, I guess, good black women to white men, then you're you're not helping the culture. Would you go on a date with me? (laughs) Would I go on a date with you? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think I could, uh, yeah, I could do that. My transformation is complete. I'm now an authentic black man. I'm so black I can sit on a stoop, like in a Spike Lee joint. I'm so black, Asians are giving me greasies in the grocery store, like in an Ice Cube song. I'm so black, for the first time in my life, I've actually got a ball in the basket. We're going to ask that Brother John will come forward. And John is here in the United States from Australia. Yeah. And he's come to offer a word of testimony. Yeah. So we would get not. My name is John, and I'd like to tell you my story. I was brought up in a white neighborhood. I was raised in a white Jewish family and growing up everyone always told me I should stop acting black. I remember being an itty bitty boy I saw Michael Jackson on the television. I started moonwalking and my white sister Margaret said stop doing that you fool. Then only a few years later I was wearing Run DMC t-shirts and I had public enemy posters all up on my bedroom wall. And my mama came in and she saw me break dancing 
And she said, why are you always acting black? And I said, Mama, I love you. And I know you're trying to bring me up to be some sort of a white Jewish boy, but I can only tell you what I feel inside. And inside, I feel black. <laughs> then in high school, I even put together my own hip hop posse, Raspberry Cordial. <laughs> and everybody laughed. And they said, will you just give up on trying so hard to be black? And you know what? They won. They defeated me. They beat it out of me. And for 15 years, I was living my life like some sort of white person. But in the last few days here in Chicago, I've remembered about how black I felt when I was a teenager. And you know what I've come to realise? The Reverend James Moody is a proud black man. The Reverend A. Jackson is a proud black man. Barack Obama is a proud black man. I, John Shatran, am a proud black man. You are an inspiration. Don't ever let anybody quiet your voice. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Sir. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank God bless. You. God bless you. So what have I learned from all this? I've learned that everything is freaking complicated. I met these black girls who told me race isn't important when dating, who are all at black speed dating. I met this half black, half Jew who told me diversity is great in a relationship. Yet, both sides of his family weren't talking to each other. Thank you, Black Like Me. Now, I'm even more confused than ever. I've been thinking. You knock on the gates of heaven with the skulls of Jews. Okay, we're about to cross the West Bank checkpoint. Would it be okay if I sang a song for you? I know what you obese 14 year olds are tweeting. If he had any guts, he'd test it out on the hardcores from Hamas. Could I just sing you a song? I want to make out with you. <laughs> Is it going to be tongue? Yeah, they'll probably be tongue. Ah. So these are the implements of uncircumcising. You've got to pull enough skin over as far as you possibly can. Oh yeah, freaking mean.